Hello and welcome to British English with me, Alexander. Again, today we're gonna be talking about another lesson of British grammar. This is Unit Four of our of our new playlist, which is all about advanced grammar in use from Cambridge University. This is a self-study reference and practice book for advanced learners of English, third edition, by Martin Hewins. So we're gonna go, th we're going through the tenses of English, right? This is important British grammar, so we can understand the the things we read or the things that we hear people saying. There are some people who say that you don't need to study grammar to speak English, but I don't believe that it's like that. We've got to understand th the grammar patterns so we can express ourselves in, ourselves in English and understand good English in particular. Okay, this is Unit 4 of our playlist about advanced English grammar, but basically we're gonna make it quite simple to be understood. In that unit, we're talking about the past continuous. And again, we can't talk about the past continuous without referring to the past simple. We've already talked about the past simple, but we've got to intercalate those tenses to understand th the past continuous in particular. Okay. Before we start, please subscribe to the channel, share the content with English learners all over the world so we can help English learners, English students improve their English, their vocabulary. And I'd like to emphasize again that uh, by studying like that, you're learning, you'll be learning all the things you need to become fluent in English. Once, uh, sorry, uh, f firstly, you're gonna learn pronunciation, which is fundamental, so you can understand the English. Secondly, you're gonna learn connected speech, and then, you're consequently, you'll be learning all the things you need, and, in, and by the way, you'll be improving your vocabulary, because when you, you hear the words you pronounce, your brain don't forget the words, so it's an excellent way to improve your vocabulary by studying like that. You're learning all the things at the same time. Pronunciation, connected with speech, intrusive R, elision, sentence stress, word stress, all the things you need to improve your English. Okay, so again, we're talking about the past continuous. So let's go through the lesson. Okay, this is section A. When we talk about two events, or activities that went on, went on over the same period of past time, we can often use the past continuous or the past simple for both. For example, Mia was reading to the children while Ben was washing up. So those two actions were occurring at the same time. While Mia was reading to the children, Ben was washing up, but we can also use the the simple past or the past simple. For example, Mia read to the children while Ben washed up. So we might use the past continuous or the past simple. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, so was reading, we're talking about the past was reading or read in the past. This is in relation to the present moment. We might say was washing up or washed up. So the first in the past continuous and the second in the past simple. It makes no difference because those events went on over the same period of time. So we can use the past continuous or the past simple for both. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, using the past continuous, 
emphasizes that the event or activity was reading was in progress. Actually, there's that emphasis when using the past continuous. So, using the past continuous emphasizes that the event or activity was was reading, for example, was in progress during the past period of time. For example, while Ben was washing up, compare. When I was learning to drive, I was living with my parents. Or, when I learned to drive, I was living with my parents. So, if you put the past continuous, it emphasizes that the activity was in progress. Was learning emphasizes that the activity was in progress. For example, I had lessons during this time. And learned, in the past simple, emphasizes completion. For example, I passed my test during this time. There's no emphasis when we use the past simple, alright? When we talk about two or more past completed events that followed one another, we use the past simple, not the past continuous, for both. For example, she got up when the alarm clock went off. Again, she got up when the alarm clock went off. So, past simple and past simple. One event followed the other. Okay, let's go now through section B. We usually use the past simple rather than the past continuous to talk about repeated past actions. For example, we went to Spain three times last year. Again, we went to Spain three times last year. It's completed. It has no relation to the past. And, for example, did you drive past her house every day? Did you drive past her house every day? However, we can use the past continuous, particularly in spoken English, when we want to emphasize that repeated actions went on for a period for a limited and temporary period of past time. For example, when Cato was in hospital, we were visiting her twice a day. Or, when Cato was in hospital, we visited her twice a day. It's referring to a temporary period, period of past time. Another example. To lose weight before the race, I wasn't eating any biscuits for weeks. Or, to lose weight before the race, I didn't eat any biscuits for weeks. Or to talk about something that happened surprisingly often. For, for example, last week I was having to bring work home every night to get it all done. Or last week I had I had to bring work home every night to get it all done. Another example. When the builders were here, I was making them cups of tea all the time. Or, when the builders were here, I made them cups of tea all the time. So we can use the past continuous or the, the past simple. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, let's go through section C. We often use the past simple in a narrative, e.g. a report or a story to talk about a single complete past event and the past continuous to describe the situation that existed at the time. The event might have interrupted the situation or happened while the situation was in progress. For example, Erica dropped her bag while she was getting into the car. So, while she was getting into the car, Erica dropped her bag. One event happened during another event. While she was getting into the, her car, she dropped her bag. Another example. 
She was shaking. She was shaking with the anger as she left the hotel. So, as she left the hotel, she was shaking with the anger. So, past continuous, a continuous action, and then a past e event that occurred during the first event to be shaken. Okay, let's go now through section D. We can use either the past continuous, a past simple, or past perfect. We're gonna see that in the future. With some verbs to talk about the things we intended to do but didn't. For example, we were meaning to call in and see you, but Mark wasn't feeling well. This is in the past continuous, but we can use the simple past or the past simple. We were meaning, sorry, we meant to call you and we meant to call in and see you, but Mark wasn't feeling well. Also, we use this pattern to the verb to consider plus ing, expect to, hope to, intend to, plan to or plan on plus ing think about or think of plus ing and want to these verbs with the exception of mean and expect and wonder about can also be used with the present and the past continuous to report what we might do in the future the past continuous is less definite than the present continuous. For example, I was thinking of going to China next year, but it depends how much money I've got. Less definite than I'm thinking of going. So I might say, I'm thinking of going to China next year, but it depends how much money I've got. And we might say, less definite than I'm thinking. It's more certain if I say, I'm thinking of going to China next year, but it depends how much money I've got. So it's more it's more definite. So we can use the past continuous or the, the present continuous in that case. Another, another example. We were wondering about inviting Eva over tomorrow. We were wondering about inviting Eva over tomorrow. This is less definite than we're wondering about. When we say we're wondering about inviting Eva over tomorrow, it's more certain. When we use the past continuous, it gets less definite. We were wondering. It doesn't mean that we're wondering now. Okay, we've just finished the lesson. So basically, we talked about the past continuous in relation to the past simple. Both of them are really useful tenses and they're used in English all the time. So we've got to know what's the difference between those tenses so we can situate situate ourselves in time. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson and please subscribe to the channel and share the content with English learners all over the world so we can so we can you can improve our English and bring it to the next level. This is advanced English. This is grammar but it's in a different way because we read it out loud. So we're learning grammar, but we're learning things that are really useful in English. We're learning vocabulary, we're learning pronunciation, and all the things that are necessary to bring your English to the next level. I hope you've enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, share, love the content, please. Cheers.